Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Turn the hat around since we're about to have a discussion, man. So, a lot of, a lot of discussions going on. Earl Spence, WBC is saying, hey, Keith Thurman is going to be our guy. The WBA is saying, no, it's going to be Stan Yunus. You got Jerron Ennis out here filing a petition since he's under the IBF as the number one guy for him to fight Earl Spence. So Earl Spence, bottom line, is he has three options, right? And of those three options, he's got three problems. Thurman, Stan Yunus, and Boots Ennis. Not easy fights, okay? Say what you want about Keith Thurman being weak to the body. Bird basket can't hold up. Earl Spence is the body snatcher, right? Dillian White body snatching over there in the UK. Earl Spence body snatching over here in the US. No argument with that, okay? Then maybe some people say Stan Yunus will be the, as far as level of difficulty and opponents. Maybe Stan Yunus. And then the guys, a lot of people are saying, probably the biggest threat to everybody as, as a welterweight and also guys at 154, Gerard Ennis. But it doesn't matter what, what we think, okay? This, these are just opinions. Some people say Keith Thurman's the number one, then Stan Yunus, then Boots Ennis is not that much of a threat because he hasn't fought anybody, okay? This is what people are saying. But I'm not here to get into that, okay? The reality is this. When it comes to the IBF, WBC, and WBA, right? The question was, well, how often should the champion make defenses against mandatory challenges? And for the WBC, they like for their belt to be defended uh, uh, about three times a year. But it can go up to two years, all right? So Spence hasn't really been uh, defending the belt. He was supposed to, and then the WBA, my understanding is it's like nine months from the time you win the championship. Same thing for the IBF. But something that a lot of people don't realize is when you talk about Keith Thurman, Spence met that um, WBC um, defense when he fought Sean Porter in 2020. So it's not quite two years. Okay, although the WBC would like to see the belt defended three times a year, he has a couple of years to get something going. But that's not really uh, preferred. They would really like him defending the belt more. But the WBC box is checked, although they're trying to get in line to push Thurman in for a fight with Spence. But the problem is they come behind the WBA and the WBC comes behind the IBF. So then it comes, comes down to, okay, who's going to get the opportunity? Since what it looks like is, although the WBC is fighting for Thurman to get in there and fight Spence, that's not going to happen because that box, as far as the mandatory defense for Spence, has been checked already. So now you got to look at, you know, who's next in the rotation? WBA or the IBF? Well, the WBA is what's next. And this is the thing, right? And this is what's crazy. Excuse me. Stan Eunice. For some of you who may not understand, well, how in the world is Stan Eunice the next in line opposed to Jerome Boutinus? When, when Earl Spence fought your Danish Yugas, Earl Spence was supposed to fight his mandatory Stan Eunice. But Stan Eunice stepped aside. That means he got paid step aside money to enable the fight to happen between Earl Spence and Yugas. That way it'll be a unification for three belts. Opposed to Earl Spence just going out there fighting Stan Eunice, making his mandatory defense for his WBA title. Stan Eunice had no problem. So I should be up next. Okay, I'll step aside now so you can go and see if you can win those belts. And whoever wins, preferably you, Earl, because you're the bigger name, then I can come and get my shot at three belts opposed to two. So now... Stan Eunice was, uh, he really didn't have any options when Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford were talking about fighting because now you're talking about unification. So Stan Eunice would have been sidelined and probably would have been the mandatory in line for whoever was the undisputed. Since the Spence and Crawford talks had fallen apart for whatever reason. Crawford said he doesn't want to you know, go over a year without fighting, can't, can't blame him. 
they weren't able to come to agreements. Key decision makers behind the scenes probably messed all of that up, right? So now Stan Eunice is the guy in line to get a shot at Earl Spence. But then you got Gerard and his dad, Boots, Boozy Ennis, who's like, hey, well, when's the last time Spence defended that IBF title? So we understand what they're trying to do with Stan Eunice, but what about us? And he has a point. But the bottom line is, when you look at the pecking order, Stan Eunice is going to probably get the shot over Thurman and over Boots in this, because Stan Eunice has already been forced to step aside once, and he should be the next in line. Keith Thurman, unfortunately for him, the WBC, that box has been checked. At the end of the year, then, you know, the WBC has an argument, but they're in the back of the line. It's the WBC, WBA, it's the WBA, IBF, and then the WBC. And that's just the way that is, it, uh, everything is right now. And, you know, it kind of sucks for fans who would like to see Thurman in there, opposed to Stan Eunice, because not because Thurman's a better fighter necessarily, but because he's the bigger name. But as far as what a lot of people feel is the most difficult challenge for Earl Spence, they say Boots Ennis. But Stan Eunice is a problem. Uh, and he can take damage and he can, he can dish it out. I'd be interested to see how that fight plays out. So that's what we're looking at. Stan Eunice is more than likely going to be the guy to fight Earl Spence. Now, for those people who are saying, oh, Earl Spence is going to just wash him and get a walk through him, hold your horses. Don't take it to the stoop. That's, this is boxing, man. And I'm going to tell you what my concern is. Not necessarily that Earl Spence is going to lose, but anything can happen, at least to Stan Eunice. My thing is, if he and Crawford remain on opposite ends of the spectrum, right? And they just can't come together. And they keep fighting, especially at 147, although Spence has hinted at moving to 154. If they keep fighting different opponents, at some point, someone is going to lose, either Spence or either Crawford. And then now you have a situation where the fight, the, unificate, the undisputed uh, bout loses its luster, loses steam, you no longer have two undefeated guys at their peak. And now we're stuck with a situation kind of like Deontay Water and AJ. That's the reality of it, okay? But when you talk about these guys and what's going on in boxing, for those of you who are trying to understand how in the world are, are, are just the Keith Thurman, Boots Innes, and, um, and Stan Eunice names, why are those names being mentioned? What about Virgil Ortiz? Well, you know, Virgil Ortiz has to sort out his situation over there. And Virgil Ortiz is more needs to tackle Terrence Crawford. Because when you take a look at what we have here with the WBO, Terrence Crawford is a WBO champion. Virgil Ortiz is first in line there. Now, Virgil Ortiz has wanted to fight three times a year. He's only fought once, and he'll probably only fight one time this year. Oscar De La Hoya is trying to get Virgil Ortiz back in the ring December or January, more than likely January. So Virgil Ortiz needs to get out of his promotional situation because he's inactive. And I just don't see him becoming active anytime soon. But under the WBO, after Virgil Ortiz, look what you got. Boots Sinners and Keith Thurman. Conor Ben, I'm pretty sure he's going to fall off of this. But then you look at what David uh, Avanasian is. He's down here at number six, okay? And Blair Cobb would be a good fight. So when we talk about Terrence Crawford cherry picking, when you look at the names that he has here, Virgil Ortiz, he's not ready. Boots Sinners, I guess he could make the fight. But I don't know, Keith Thurman? Hey, I don't know why he didn't talk to Thurman, but the bottom line, he picked this guy. Maybe because this guy was in training, he was ready, and he would just take whatever deal was thrown at him. With these guys, you're going to have to negotiate a little bit. Ortiz, Ennis, and Thurman, there's going to be some negotiation. I don't know who the hell, uh, well, we know Ben is Cody Crowley. He's not even a well, well enough uh, known name to come out here and fight. But Evanesian, you know, coming off of six, six fights, six knockouts, he's at, he's at number six. So that's kind of how, how, when you look at it, Terrence Crawford, I guess his way of thinking with picking an opponent. Doesn't mean we like it or not. But if anyone's going to push to have an argument to fight Terrence Crawford, it would be Virgil Ortiz. And when you come over here to the IBF, well, Earl Spence is the champion. He got Boots Ennis. That's why Boots Ennis has filed a petition. He wants to get in and fight Earl Spence. But again, it doesn't matter what, where he's racking stacked here for the IBF. It's all about the pecking order and... The WBC checked their box. The WBA is next. 
and then you got the IBF. But under the IBF, you got Boots Simmons, Virgil Ortiz, and then a couple, then a, a couple of the names here that we're familiar with. Some that, like me, I'm be honest with you, I don't know who the hell they are. And for the WBC, we know these names: Keith Thurman. That's not going to happen because uh, Spence fought Sean Porter within a two-year period. Virgil Ortiz Jr., Jerome Boots Simmons. Okay, and then you got the same name again, Havana Sin. And then when you come now, let's move on, move on over here to understand the WBA. This is where Stan Yunus comes into play. Stan Yunus is a champion. Stan Yunus has a belt. Okay, okay, this is what a lot of people don't understand. Earl Spence is a super champion, and Stan Yunus is just a champion for the WBA. Stan Yunus has already had to step aside once. So now that Earl Spence is available to fight, he's going to have to fight Stan Yunus. Okay, and after he fights him, if he wins. Then he's going to come into IBF, and that's where Boots Ennis will probably get a shot if Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford don't, don't come together and fight. So in, in all reality, what we're, what we're really looking at here with these guys, what we're looking at is um, you're looking at Stan Eunice, then it'll be Boots Ennis, and then after that you'll have uh, Jerron uh Keith Thurman. But this is how they kind of had a racking stack right now for welterweights. Spence is number one, then Crawford, then Ennis, then Yugas, then Ortiz Jr. There's a lot of people who would agree with that ranking. Um, I think you can flip-flop the one and two, but the three, four, and five, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily wrong, but Ortiz Jr., I think he... Uh, I think he can definitely be above Yugis, but then again, he's, he's got to keep proving himself. To me, Ennis needs a big fight um, to, to finally get a name. But look at how many fights he has. 29 fights, kind of still fighting nobodies. He has to step up in competition. Then you got Stan Yunus, Thurman, Avanasia, and Ben, and Butabiev. I'll tell you what, when Stan, I don't know if you guys watched that fight, but when Stan Yunus and Butabiev fought, that wasn't no joke, man. That was a good fight. So all in all, when you look at it, and the reality of things, the WBC is pushing for Keith Thurman. And don't be surprised if Keith Thurman gets through. The WBC has a lot, a lot of pull. They have a lot of pull, man, and a lot of influence. I'm telling y'all, when it comes to money, do not be surprised if Spence and Thurman fight, although Spence does not want to fight Thurman. But if for some reason that doesn't happen, the reality of the situation is Spence and Stan Eunice. Stan Eunice is a champion. He's already stepped aside. What we all would like to see is probably Earl Spence and Ennis. And I don't fault y'all for that. But I, I, I would say either Ennis or Thurman. Preferably Thurman because Thurman's the big name. That's what I'd like to see. But, you know, it is what it is. So more to come. Not a done deal yet, but it looks like the Stan Eunice. Earl Spence bout is gaining a lot, a lot of steam, and um, it is what it is at this point. But that being said, y'all keep cool. More to come. And as always, man, shout out to everybody from all seven continents. Appreciate your support. Shout out to the veterans, and I'm in the breeze.